The first of AMD's second generation Ryzen chips has been spotted, and we've got some clocks, TDP, and more, so stay tuned. Welcome back to GamerMeld. Before I get started, don't forget to subscribe to GamerMeld for all things hardware news and reviews. Ryzen 2.0, or the 2000 series, whatever you want to call AMD's second generation Ryzen processors running on the new Zen Plus architecture are beginning to surface on the SciSoft database. Today we have our first look at AMD's newest generation processors with an engineering sample most of you will be interested in, the Ryzen 5 2600. Now, as long as they keep the same SKUs as their first generation Ryzen, which I don't see why they wouldn't, this is the successor to the Ryzen 5 1600, which is the non-XFR 6-core 12-thread CPU. Of course, don't forget that all Ryzen CPUs are overclockable, so the non-XFR is a great buy compared to the XFR version if you plan to manually overclock. I know, I know, you just want to know about the chip. All right, but before I get to that, remember that this is an engineering sample, though given it's so close to release, I wouldn't expect too much of a difference come final product. Just make sure you keep this in mind at least. Either way, let's go over these specs. First up, just like the Ryzen 5 1600, this is also a 6-core 12-thread CPU. This means that those who were hoping for a ton more cores, like Threadripper and Ryzen 7, which I'm really not sure where those rumors came from, but it's almost certainly not going to happen. With that said, the new chip is packing 16 megabytes of L3 cache and a 65 watt TDP, both of which match that of the current Ryzen 5 1600. What doesn't match AMD's last generation Ryzen 5 processor is its clocks. As a refresher, remember that the Ryzen 5 1600 has a base clock of 3.2 GHz and a boost of 3.6. Well, this new 2600 comes with a base clock of 3.4 GHz and a boost of 3.8. Basically, we're looking at a 200 MHz difference in both the base and boost clocks, yet with the same TDP. So you may be wondering what this even means. Well, unfortunately, I don't suggest pulling too many conclusions because not only is it just an engineering sample, but we don't have any information on manual overclocking potential, IPC, etc. With that said, it is a little disappointing. I can't see for sure, but I wouldn't expect too much beyond 200 MHz when comparing overclocks. I could be wrong, so don't jump on me, but I simply wouldn't be surprised. If that is the case, it's not bad, but it's not great, especially for those hoping we'd see a big enough boost in clocks to better compete with Intel and things like gaming with CPUs over 8 threads. If we were to assume all this is in fact the case, it really depends on where AMD prices these. If they hold to their initial MSRP of the 1600, we'd be looking at around $220. But with the likes of Intel's upcoming i5-8500, which was also recently spotted in SciSoft, with a 200 MHz increase over the 8400's base clock, and an MSRP almost certainly at that same price point, AMD would effectively stay in its same position, with Intel winning in tasks that utilize six or less cores and AMD overtaking them in heavily threaded workloads. Now, that may not be a bad position to be in, but I think some of us were hoping for more, especially with the 12 nanometer process. Really, we'll just have to wait and see. So while that does it for today, let me know what you think. Will 200 megahertz be enough, or do you expect a major overclocking difference between the 1600 and 2600 with stock clocks not really telling us much? Let me know down in the comments below. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggested video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.